So, Pluto used to be one of the planets. Now, it's just a far away, dim dwarf planet kinda out of sight, out of mind. But recently, some well-known space dudes like Neil deGrasse Tyson and Michio Kaku are talking about it again. They're saying Pluto might be headed on a collision course with Neptune, which sounds pretty wild. This isn't just some crazy idea they cooked up. They're seriously concerned that Pluto might crash into Neptune. How could that even happen? What would it even look like? Is it all just a weird illusion in space, or is something real happening out there? Pluto's path gets super close to Neptune's, and Tyson and Kaku are saying that even a tiny change in Pluto's orbit could cause a major problem. Could Earth get messed up, too? And how could this even start? Let's check what a Pluto-Neptune smash-up could mean. Even though Pluto got demoted, people are still curious about it. But now that top scientists are pointing out how close its orbit is to Neptune's, that curiosity is turning into worry. Tyson and Kaku, who everyone knows in the astrophysics community, are saying this might not be just a close call. It could be bad for us here on Earth, too. But how could that even work? Pluto's trip around the sun isn't normal. It takes Pluto about 248 Earth years to go all the way around the sun. Since we first saw it in 1930, it hasn't even made one full lap. What's even weirder is how its orbit looks. Instead of being round like the other planets, it's stretched out at a tilt, making it different from the rest. It's tilted about 17 degrees compared to everyone else. Here's the weird part. For about 20 years every orbit, Pluto actually gets closer to the sun than Neptune does. Yeah, even though it's farther out, it crosses inside Neptune's orbit for a while. So, why haven't they crashed? Turns out it's a balance between gravity and the solar system. After Pluto got spotted, astronomers tried to figure out how it moved. Most planets line up with this flat plane around the sun. Pluto does its own thing with a big tilt and a weird path that crosses Neptune's. But somehow, they haven't hit. That's where space mechanics come in. Scientists call it the three-body problem. Trying to get how three big things, Pluto, Neptune, and the sun, pull on each other with gravity. It's like predicting a dance where everyone's pulling on each other. For Pluto, there are some strange but important ideas, like asynchronous oscillation, orbital drift, and the VZK wobble. All this helps explain why Pluto hasn't crashed into Neptune. Asynchronous oscillation means when Pluto zips past Neptune's orbit, it's always at least 90 degrees away, like they're on opposite sides of a circle. That keeps them apart. Orbital drift is like Pluto's path moving up and down compared to the flat paths of the other planets. So, when it's closest to Neptune, it's usually above or below it, which avoids a crash. Finally, the VZK wobble. It looks at how Pluto, Neptune, and the Sun all tug on each other. These poles make a rhythm that keeps Pluto steady, even if it looks shaky. This wobble shows that the world may look wild, but something keeps it in order. These patterns keep Pluto from smashing into Neptune and help the solar system stay chill. This three-thing interaction is key to seeing how orbits work and how they shift when big guys like Neptune and Jupiter pull on them. It also helps scientists get how orbits might act in faraway systems. Back in the late 80s, scientists did computer tests and learned something wild. Even though Pluto's orbit is protected, it's still wobbly over time. Could it be a loose cannon? Tiny changes in Pluto's spot or speed could cause big changes in where it ends up later. But even though it's fragile, Pluto's orbit has been pretty stable for billions of years. It's like a tightrope walker, kind of shaky, but still doing okay. Modern tools have helped astronomers get how giant planets like Neptune, Jupiter, and Saturn affect Pluto's orbit. Pluto and Neptune have an orbit thing going on. For every two laps Pluto does, Neptune makes three. This ratio keeps Pluto safe. Neptune isn't the only helper, though. Jupiter's gravity also helps a ton with Pluto's safety. Saturn pitches in two. Jupiter's so big that it can keep Pluto stable for a long time. These three act like guardians, making sure Pluto stays put. These weird patterns keep our solar system from going crazy. 
Without them, space would be filled with crashes as things slammed into each other or got flung out. Pluto is a good example of how catching motion in space helps us dodge problems. Seeing how Pluto moves helps us get the big system and its constant changes. Pluto's orbit shows us that even a path that looks shaky can find some balance. The invisible forces of gravity and motion are why scientists reacted to the shocking find. It also shows why checking out weird stuff is key. They can teach us how creation works. Looking at the deep spots of space reminds us how strange our world is. Pluto's orbit is a great example of that. Scientists call this orbital chaos. A planet's path can change a lot depending on where it starts and how fast it's going. For Pluto, tiny changes to where it starts can mean different results later. That's where computers come in. They let scientists see what would happen if they tweaked Pluto's spot or speed. These tests have shown even though Pluto has stabilizers, it can still veer off course if it starts out a little differently. But somehow, Pluto stayed consistent for billions of years. It might wobble, but it's still in a rhythm. It's super hard to guess where Pluto will go in the future. These systems change from small things. The best plans have limits. They need the starting numbers right. A small mistake can mess everything up. Even with these problems, Pluto gives lessons. It shows the world is always changing. What we get of it is always growing, and the planets we know can shock us. So why are experts like Tyson and Kaku warning us about a Pluto-Neptune crash? Aren't there enough safety nets? Neil deGrasse Tyson, who everyone knows, has a take on Pluto. He helped change its name from planet to dwarf planet. He wasn't dissing Pluto, but showing our better idea of what counts as a planet. For him, Pluto shows how science grows. Tyson sees Pluto's orbit as a reminder of how much we don't know. It keeps astronomy fun. Talking about Pluto crashing into Neptune, Tyson's concerned. He says since Pluto's orbit has been safe so far, small changes could cause trouble. The paths of Pluto and Neptune make a pattern that could get wobbly. Tyson thinks even a small bump could send Pluto into Neptune. Of course, if that builds up for a while, it could mean chaos, maybe even a crash. That could take a long time. Tyson still thinks we should watch Pluto's path. He thinks it deserves study. As warnings from Tyson and Kaku spread online, the idea of a Pluto-Neptune crash kickstarts chats and studies. Telescopes are pointing toward the solar system. While computers run tests to guess Pluto's future path, the stakes are up. If these two bodies crashed, it could change the world and its structure. What would a Pluto-Neptune crash look like? Neptune is a gas giant about 17 times the mass of Earth with a hydrogen, helium, and methane atmosphere. Pluto is a tiny dwarf planet less than one-fifth the size of Earth's moon. A head-on crash seems crazy, but in space, even a small object can cause issues. If Pluto smashed into Neptune, the hit would release energy equal to billions of bombs. Neptune's layers might hold the blow, but the force would mess with its atmosphere, sending shock waves and starting massive storms. And Pluto would break apart into tons of pieces. Some pieces could fly out, making space trash for a while. Others could get caught in Neptune's gravity, making a ring or a new moon. The crash could change Neptune's orbit. The solar system is a tuned machine with planets' gravity affecting others. A shift in Neptune's path could target Uranus, Saturn, and Jupiter, messing up the stability. Could this reach Earth? Not likely soon, but over time, changes could lead to changes, affecting everything. The public scared. Social media is posting about the world ending or Pluto's revenge. Some say it's hype. Others want something done. What can we do about a crash that takes years? The answer isn't stopping the crash, but getting it. Scientists want a study probe to study Pluto and Neptune. The spacecraft would watch Pluto's orbit, map its interactions, and analyze gravity from other planets. It also has tools to study Neptune. Finding signs of past disruptions. It could give Earth data. The talk about is Pluto a planet. Tyson says labels don't care. Seeing Pluto's behavior matters. It's about can we guess its next move. 
Science is about survival. Kaku gives a big take, seeing Pluto's problem as a reminder of where we are. We're part of it. What happens to Pluto and Neptune affects us because it makes us face how fragile we are. The world is an act of chaos and order, and we are still getting the next step. As time passes, the Pluto-Neptune crisis becomes a new journey. International groups fund missions to the solar system. While schools help astronomers and engineers learn how orbital dynamics, Pluto becomes a symbol of curiosity. Whether or not it crashes with Neptune, its weird orbit reminds us that the world is full of shocks and it's not over.